then your and your rate set points for the underlying feedback controllers to use. So we're completely taking out the uh, interpretation of the sticks, which normally gets translated into position and velocity set points, and we're taking over those controllers ourselves. So, nice thing about polynomial trajectories is they're very easy to evaluate the first, second, and third derivatives through time, which one makes them easy to optimize, but it also makes them easy to implement. And so, uh, if you want, you can find this piece of code uh, at code.modalai.com uh, or copy the whole long link if you want. Uh, there's a QR code here as well if you want to follow that. And so what we're basically doing is just evaluating the x, y, and z polynomials uh, for their position as well as velocity and acceleration and sending all of those set points down into px4. Uh, roughly 30 to 50 hertz is about reasonable uh, for a nice smooth trajectory. Now, you do have to send the velocity and acceleration set points if you want it to follow along the path because if you only give it uh, a position set point, let's say I'm trying to walk around like this, if you only give it the position set point and set the velocity set points at zero, you're going to be relying on the feedback loop of the, uh, the outermost loop, the position controller, to have to deviate from the path before it actually sends in the velocity command required. And so you're going to end up with the thing drifting way off and overshooting corners like a car going around a racetrack with uh, plastic tires on. However, if you give the feed forward components to the inner loops for what you predict the velocity will be, then the multi-copter position controller is going to sum your feed forward term that comes from the velocity and the acceleration components with any error it sees in the position and keep you on track very, very accurately. So we have a little demo where we'll uh, fly a figure eight around autonomously by just sending in offboard commands in a loop. And if you turn off acceleration and uh, velocity inputs, PX4 does a figure eight that's about twice as big as if you send in the feed forward components. And then if you load up the logs, you'll actually see PX4 is logging spot on the, uh, the path that we actually send in. So PX4 can fly these paths very, very accurately if you're diligent about populating out that whole map link message and really making sure that the feed forward terms are accurate. And let's see it actually fly the path. I don't know why these aren't starting. So here's the exact path that uh, I had on the slide earlier. So our reference drone is going to pop out of the, the little closet in there and then fly the S-curve down the hallway and back out and come to a graceful stop. And here you'll see the output from the path plan. So there's a... if I can get it to stop. That's the slide, okay. So there's a few different path plans that you can see up on the screen. The, uh, the pink line is optimizing just for smoothness while keeping at least, I think, 30 centimeters away from any obstacle. But then we run this through a second level of optimization uh, that's part of the VoxBlox uh, open source code base, uh, by the way, uh, which generates the blue line, which is a second optimization that also takes into account distance from obstacles in the sign distance field. And so you'll notice the result is the path, instead of kind of cutting the corner, will tend to uh, fly a little bit more straight down the center of the hallway and then take a wider turn around the edge of the hallway to keep the distance. It still generates a smooth path, probably only 1% worse in the smoothness criteria from uh, the first one, 
but it's a lot more confidence inspiring to have drones that walk around hallways and offices a little bit more like we do as humans, staying down the middle of places and not bumping our shoulder through the edges of doorways and uh, corners. Okay, so I think that's my time. I'd like to open this for questions. Just position mode. Correct. Um, so we're just relying on the VIO algorithm not drifting significantly over time. Uh, our, the VIO that we use day in and day out does have a, a very primitive uh, 3D map of feature points in the back end. And so when it returns back to a place that it has seen, it does relocalize very, very well. It doesn't come back with just like a normal odometry diff, uh, drift. Of course, if the drone wakes up and gets powered on, then uh, it's in a completely new reference frame. And so that video you saw there, that entire map was built out and the path was calculated and flown in one cycle. That wasn't waking up with a new map. If we had a fiduciary marker on the ground, we could save that map and then wake up again. We have that ability, it's just not necessary for day in and day out use. Thank you. Hmm? Any more questions? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so can you repeat have... the question, please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, so we can get in the mic. Sorry. Yeah. When you're sending the set positions through Mavlink, were you populating both the position and the velocities, or is it either one or the other? Uh, there's a type mask you can send in any combination that you want. So you can decide not to send in position, but you can send in velocity and acceleration, or you can just do position and then forget about the others. I like to send in all three. Okay, so you could actually do both at the same time. Because mm -hmm. I know, I come from Argecopter, and I know they had, I don't know if they're able to do that. Uh, I th don't think you'll be able to do super tight trajectory following without the ability to do that. Okay. And then my other question is, um, when you stop sending odometry, does it fall back to a different mode or is it expected? Uh, EKF will time out uh, if it stops getting VIO messages mm -hmm. uh, and it will fall back to altitude flight mode. Okay. And it handles, it's just uh, diffs, right? So it handles big jumps and if there's like inconsistencies with the data, it'll just throw them out? Uh, it will not throw them out. It will just it'll be upset to and go into a wall. Okay. So don't send in odometry with discontinuity. Okay, so the EKF is not going to filter that out? No. Okay. Thank you. I have a question from our virtual audience. Uh, you've mentioned real-time obstacle avoidance running when you're flying with RC controller. Do you see that during autonomous flight as well? Or do you plan a new trajectory that includes the newly detected obstacle? Um, so our internal 3D mapping and path planning algorithm uh, is currently redoing the trajectory as it's flying. Uh, so that as the map updates and new things appear in front of it, it will generate a new trajectory around it. Uh, but that is not a PX4 specific feature. That is something that's part of our 3D mapping. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Let me pass. Thank you. Uh, when you said that you're uh, feeding predicted uh, velocities into the uh, Mavlink uh, commands, uh, how are you predicting the velocities? Are you using some kind of AI or is it just uh, based on the actual frame and the size? Oh, no, it's uh, the desired velocity and acceleration of the trajectory itself. So the polynomials that represent the trajectory that we want to fly, we can easily evaluate the first and second derivatives of that before sending them in. So we have one polynomial, we just evaluate zero, one, and two derivatives and send all of them in at the same time. Oh. Yep. Why does the PX4 do that just statically if you just set position? It doesn't know. It doesn't know what trajectory I'm commanding it. It would have to dirty differentiate from previous inputs, but I can evaluate a polynomial either at the current point or indeed in the future if I want to before sending the set point in. How far in the future do you use the set point? Uh, so PX4 is, PX4 can only take in a set point and then update the, uh, the commands 
at that point in time. Uh, when I say evaluate the velocity and acceleration in the future, that would be for uh, basically accounting for the delay in sending the Mavlink messages through. So I can say, okay, I know it's going to take 50 milliseconds for the whole pipeline to flush out. Let me just evaluate the polynomial 50 milliseconds in the future, and by the time it gets set, it'll be spot on. Is there a last question here? Uh, thanks for the great presentation. Um, so all the examples you showed or demoed in these confined environments, do you have any insights on like what the limit is in terms of like altitude or um, like more higher altitudes, more applicable for like fixed wing or VTOL vehicles? Um, so the high resolution 3D maps uh, that I show probably wouldn't scale well to multi-kilometer regions uh, without being re-architected to do so. Uh, most of what we've shown has been for indoor flight. That's the intention. That being said, we've never tried outdoor flight. Uh, Vox blocks does scale quite nicely, very much like uh, Minecraft. It's world is broken up into chunks and it only ever operates on the chunks that it is nearby and operating on. Uh, but that's just not something that we've tried. Okay, last question, I think. <laughs> then we're out of time. Would there be any, uh, would there be any capability for uh, not needing to pre-build the 3D map to be able to build it live so that you could fly in a location where you've never flown before? Uh, so that map was built live, so, so it, it woke built, up with nothing. While the drone was flying? Uh, ETH Zurich has extended Vox blocks and has code uh, available for you to play with for exploration. I think that's the line you're going down. Uh, that's not something I've played with personally, but I hope to soon once uh, this is all super ironed out and we have a okay, experience. Yeah. So with this, you were walking around build, building the map with the drone and then it was flying in that map. Correct. It wasn't building the map itself as it was flying? Uh, no, we were flying that whole time. We didn't yes. walk it around. But okay. yeah, it woke up with no map. We flew it back and forth and then we said, okay, now do a, a Got path. you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, we run out of time, sorry, but we can continue the conversation in the hall. Thank you, James, for your time. Oh, yeah. <laughs>